Grace and peace be to you from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. Welcome to our midday prayer service from New Creation Anglican Church for Wednesday, July 20th. A copy of the service bulletin can be found on the YouTube page, or you can follow along in the prayer book, and the service begins on page 33 in the prayer book. Let us pray. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Alleluia. One of the Psalms appointed for today from the the lectionary in the prayer book is Psalm 51, and it's found on page 333 or on the service bulletin. Again, Psalm 51. Have mercy on me, O God, in your great goodness. According to the multitude of your mercies, wipe away my offenses. Wash me thoroughly from my wickedness and cleanse me from my sin. For I acknowledge my faults and my sin is ever before me. Against you only have I sinned and done this evil in your sight so that you are justified in your sentence and blameless in your judgment. Behold, I was brought forth in wickedness and in sin my mother conceived me. But behold, you desire truth in the inward parts and shall make me understand wisdom secretly. You shall purge me with hyssop and I shall be clean. You shall wash me and I shall be whiter than snow. You shall make me hear of joy and gladness that the bones which you have broken may rejoice. Turn your face from my sins and blot out all my misdeeds. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from your presence, and take not your Holy Spirit from me. O give me the comfort of your help again, and sustain me with your willing spirit. Then shall he teach your ways unto the wicked, and sinners shall return unto you. Deliver me from blood guilt, O God, the God of my salvation, and my tongue shall sing of your righteousness. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth shall show forth your praise. For you desire no sacrifice, or else I would give it to you, but you delight not in burnt offering. The sacrifice of God is a troubled spirit, a broken and contrite heart, O God, you shall not despise. O be favorable and gracious unto Zion. May you build up the walls of Jerusalem. Then shall you be pleased with the sacrifice of righteousness, with the burnt offerings and oblations. Then shall they offer young bullocks upon your altar. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Our reading from scripture today is taken from the book of the prophet Isaiah, from the sixth chapter, verses one through seven. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting upon a throne, high and lifted up and the train of his robe filled the temple. Above him stood the seraphim. Each had six wings. With two he covered his face, and with two he covered his feet, and with two he flew. And one called to another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory and the foundations of the threshold shook at the voice of him who called, and the house was filled with smoke. 
And I said, Woe is me, for I am lost, for I am a man of unclean lips, and I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips. For my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Then one of the seraphim flew to me, having in his hand a burning coal that he had taken with tongs from the altar. And he touched my mouth and said, Behold, this has touched your lips. Your guilt is taken away and your sin atoned for. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. For our meditation today, we'll, we'll take a look at both the, the psalm and the, the reading from Isaiah. In our opening uh, hymn, I hope you recognize the, uh, the instrumental version of Holy, Holy, Holy. And that is the God that, that we worship as Christians, the God who is revealed in the Bible and in Jesus and by the Holy Spirit. He is a holy God. He is pure. He is righteous. He is righteousness itself. And when we come into the presence of this holy God, of holiness and purity and righteousness, it causes different reactions in us. Sometimes it causes great joy to be in his presence. Uh, sometimes it causes us to be extremely thankful and grateful. And at other times, as we read from Isaiah and in the Psalm that David wrote, it causes us to recognize our sin and our sinfulness and that we are not holy. We're in the presence of holiness itself and we are not holy. We're in the presence of purity, but we're not pure. We're in the presence of the one who is blameless, and yet we are blamed, full of blame and guilt because of our sin. And so both of them, in what we read today, uh, have this realization, this response when they come into the presence of God. Isaiah sees God seated on the throne and he his response is woe is me in this version this translation uh, Isaiah says he is lost other translations have it that he is a sinner and that is who David recognizes and acknowledge himself to be a man of sin and he cries out to God for mercy because God is full of mercies. God didn't even say anything to Isaiah. He was just, Isaiah was just in God's presence and he recognized that he was a sinner and because of his sin, he was lost. And David recognized his sins and his faults and the need for God to forgive him, to be merciful to him so that he could be forgiven and restored in a right relationship with God. In the 16th chapter of John's Gospel, Jesus is talking to his disciples on the night of, of the Last Supper. And one of the things that he talks about is the Holy Spirit. And he says that the Holy Spirit is is going to come after he has ascended back to the Father. And Jesus tells his disciples that the Holy Spirit is going to have several purposes. And one of those purposes is to convict the world of sin. Well, we Christians are part of the world. We're, we're here in the world. We're not to be of it, of course, but we, we're here and we are sinners just like those who don't believe in Jesus yet. But we Christians commit sins. And therefore, we too need to be like David, to acknowledge them, confess them, and ask for God's forgiveness. 
Wow. This is the work of the Holy Spirit, and it's a gift from God that the Holy Spirit reveals our sins to us so that we can see what the sins are in each of us. We can acknowledge them as painful and as, as hurtful as that might be, how embarrassing that might be. But that's what God wants is for us to, to see what our sins are, to acknowledge them and confess them, and then receive them, his forgiveness, out of his great love and mercy. And that is able to be done. Our Heavenly Father is able to forgive us because of what his son Jesus did by dying on the cross, shedding his blood, paying the cost of the sins of each of us. And the good news for each of us, we read at the end of Isaiah, one of the seraphim who touched the lips of Isaiah said to him, Behold, this has touched your lips. Your guilt is taken away and your sin atoned for. And that's what Jesus Christ has accomplished by dying on the cross shedding his blood. And he is atoned for the sins of every person. And so that gift awaits every person. So with the help of the Holy Spirit, in fact, let us invite and ask the Holy Spirit to show us what our sins are so that we can acknowledge and confess them and receive our Heavenly Father's forgiveness and in Jesus Christ, be restored to a right relationship with our Heavenly Father. We'll continue the service with the prayers, which can be found on page 37 or again on the service bulletin. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. And now that beautiful prayer that our Lord Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. O Lord, hear our prayer, and let our cry come to you. Let us pray. It's one of the colleagues found on page 38. Pour your grace into our hearts, O Lord, that we who have known the incarnation of your Son, Jesus Christ, announced by an angel to the Virgin Mary, may by his cross and passion be brought to the glory of his resurrection, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And the colleague for the sixth Sunday of Pentecost, which we just celebrated this past Sunday. O God, you declare your almighty power chiefly in showing mercy and pity. Grant us the fullness of your grace, that we, running to obtain your promises, may become partakers of your heavenly treasure. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. And we'll continue with prayers of intercession and thanksgiving. Um, if 
three categories in particular, our families, our church, and our communities. First, for our families. And first, Father, we give you praise and thanks uh, that you've made it possible to be members of your family through your son, Jesus Christ, through the sacrament of baptism. Thank you so much for your love and your mercies uh, and that you are a God of relationships made it possible to be your sons and daughters, to be in relationship with you because of what your son accomplished and with the help of your Holy Spirit. And we bring before you, Father, our family members. And we ask you to bless each of them, provide for each of them. We're thankful for those who know you and are in love and relationship with you and your Son, your Holy Spirit. And we pray for our family members who don't know you yet or have gone away from you that you would reach out to them and make yourself known to them. We ask, Father, that you would heal our family members wherever that healing is needed body, soul, mind, or spirit. Ask that you would heal relationships, bring about forgiveness and reconciliation where it's needed. And ask you, Father, to heal the memories that need to be healed and covered in the blood of Jesus. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer for our church. Father, we thank you for enabling Father Clemente Brooke to plant New Creation Church in Hagerstown. We thank you for all that you have provided, people, resources, opportunities. Father, we ask you to continue to provide what's needed to fulfill your will for New Creation Church. Continue to bring in the people you have called. Give us a spirit of evangelism. We thank you, Father, for the guidance which you've given to the vestry. Ask that you would continue to, to give your wisdom and guidance to the vestry of New Creation Church. Help us to make decisions in accordance with your will. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer and for our communities. How we pray and ask especially, Father, that you would guide here and Stephanie Sipes in their ministry in Chambersburg. Provide the people and the resources they need the opportunities as they 
seek to plant an Anglican church there. So they develop friendships and relationships with people in Chambersburg, continue to draw people together to build that body in Jesus. I ask that you would guide the core group in the Frederick area as they work at planting an Anglican church in Frederick. Enable them, Father, to know your will and, and provide the help and the guidance to people that they need. Thank you, Father, for the fellowship you've brought about it. At the Walnut Towers in Hagerstown. We ask that you would strengthen that, that community and those relationships, help them to grow in their friendship with one another and with you, Jesus. Father, we ask you to remove the clouds of darkness that are over our communities. We ask that you would shine your light into each of these communities and draw people out of darkness into your light. Draw people to Jesus. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Now a time for any other uh, prayers of intercession, praise, or thanksgiving. We ask, Father, that you would prepare people who are delegates to the election synod for the next bishop in this diocese of the Mid-Atlantic. Give them your wisdom and discerning and understanding as they go through the interview process and bring them to be of one mind with the man you have chosen to be the next bishop in this diocese, for this diocese. And make that man clearly known to those who, who will make the selection. Father, we thank you for the healing you have done for our members of New Creation Church. We ask that you would continue to heal people where the healing is needed, as well as the other folks on our prayer list. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplications to you. And you have promised through your well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will grant their requests. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth and in the age to come, life everlasting. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. And now, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. And the peace of the Lord be with each of you.